Hey everybody, it's Maggie Mulhern. We are here at the Premier Show 2019. I am here with one of my favorite people, not just in the industry, but in the world. Oh, Sam Villa, he is the best. And he has agreed to give us a few minutes behind the scenes. Uh, we're, we're deep in model country and here. it's hot. And it's hot. It's probably, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say 120 back here. But, so I'm gonna get back and, and watch Sam do this fine haircut. Yeah, I, I wanna give you a pattern that's great for fine hair, layering it out and how to get volume in the crown. Oh, it's so cool, that's yeah. what everybody wants to know. So I'm gonna come back and take the camera. Sam, take it away. All right, Maggie, thank you so much. And by the way, if you're not following Modern Salon, what are you waiting for? You need to be following Modern Salon. I subscribe to Modern Salon and I follow Modern Salon. Let's support our subscriptions in the professional industry. So let's talk about what we're gonna do. So let's say you've got a bob or you have fine hair and you wanna layer that bob out. They're tired of it being one length. Or you have fine hair and you wanna layer fine hair. Fine hair. The problem with layering fine hair is when you blend a haircut with fine hair, you've actually made it finer. So this is really the type of texture that we need to be detaching. So here's the object. I wanna create a salon scenario for you. Client comes in, fine hair or bob. She says, I want volume on the top. And she has basically pretty much one length hair. Fine hair, she wants to keep it one length because it keeps the weight at the perimeter. So how do we keep the weight at the perimeter and still layer out that fine hair? Take a look, watch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the middle part, okay? So I'm gonna take just a center part. And the reason I'm coming off the center is because I wanna create the layers symmetrical on both sides, left and right side. Okay, now once we've done that, watch what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take my comb, place it on here, Maggie, and I'm just gonna rock it back. So when the comb comes off of the hairline and off back here, this is where I'm gonna start my sectioning. So my object of my game is this. I wanna leave this front one length. This is great for those yoga instructors that say, I have to pull my hair back, or anyone that says to you, I have to pull my hair back. If they say they have to pull your hair back, then and, but they want volume and they want some layers, this is a great way to approach it. So what are we doing, Sam? We're taking a halo section, just a circular section from that ending point where the comb came off the head. Okay, now here's the problem though. What I don't wanna do is reach back to the past and create a cap cut. Okay, where this was layered, and I don't want to have a cappy line. So now I have a solid line here. Chances are with a solid line, I'm gonna end up with a solid line in my, with the solid section, I'm gonna end up with a solid line in my layering. So there's many ways that you can counter that. We can use texturizing techniques that we have available to us, or let's alter the section. So watch this, Maggie. Let's take a the section, I'm gonna give you a profile view of this. Look at the section that I've made here, okay? Now I want this section, to be zigzag. So if I zigzag it and you cut a line, you're actually creating texture already. So make your work easy so you're not coming back so much and relying on texture techniques to soften your lines. I know where that line is. I visualize that. Now comb everything back into your hand, visualizing that line. Now take the comb, the white teeth of the comb, go up and down, right on that line. Okay, now visualize where that line was. Slice your finger where you saw that line and now release it and you've been able to create a zigzag section. So what am I trying to share with you? I'm trying to help you with time. Instead of taking a zigzag section like this and drawing it in, you could see how I used my comb to get a nice soft zigzag edge in there. I'm gonna go to the back, oh excuse me, the opposite side and create that. Now Maggie, let's talk about the industry and what's happening out there. And Maggie and I were just chatting about it a little bit. You know, there's a lot of changes going on out there. You know, a lot of things going on in terms of social and education. You know, education is so valuable to you. I really believe as a hairdresser, you must never cease to learn. Just as a teacher, I must never cease to learn. There's always something to learn. So here's what I wanna share with you. I want you to start taking the common things that you do and start to discover uncommon ways to do them. Why? So that you get your client's attention. Why? So you create a sense of enthusiasm for yourself. Stop doing things the same way. So now look at my section. We've been able to create a zigzag section moving right around, all the way around that. Once we've established that, you must isolate the underneath. Now we're gonna maintain this length and the weight that we have underneath. Now let's talk about, think about once you have this section, what do you want the hair to do, okay? I want her to be able to put her hands to it and when she puts her hands to it, you see this layer graduation, the layering moving back. So that in mind, I'm gonna go back to my center part now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a diagonal forward section. So I'm gonna work on the right side. I'm gonna take a diagonal forward section, okay? And now I'm gonna start to layer this out. This is gonna be so cool, watch this. 
okay? So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna take everything right to this center part that I have here. So my hand's gonna come about that. I'm gonna figure out where do I want this hair to sit? Where do I want that layer to fall? Look how I dropped my hand to see where that's gonna sit. I'm gonna put a little bit more length into that and that's what I'm gonna do. So now watch what I'm doing. Let's give you a profile view of this. I am taking this and I am cutting this by elevating this diagonally and my finger angle is diagonal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and I'm going to notch that. It's almost like scanning and just notching it. Okay, so there's where I'm gonna go. Now let's, before I move on, take that a little slightly shorter. Before I move on, check and see where this length's at. See if you like that, where it's gonna collapse. Okay, I like that. Now watch this, Maggie. This next section, look how I've got my clips. This next section, ignore the fact that that's a zigzag. Take your next diagonal forward section. And I'm gonna give you a view of this. Now watch what I'm gonna do. Stop matching your guides. Okay, so now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna float this guide right there. Fold it so you can see. I'm gonna float that inside of my finger angle. So now that's disappeared. So I'm actually extending the length about an eighth of an inch on each section. And the reason being is because this is what's gonna give me my texture. You know, if you blend, you're creating solid lines. So the idea is create your texture as you're going through your haircut. So you're not going through and you're not going through and you're not uh, recutting and recutting and recutting. Now watch what I did. There's section one. Here comes section two. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go slightly long, slide that line inside your fingers. As soon as you can't see it, cut. Now take a look at what I'm creating here. Look at, look at the soft edge that I'm creating on there. Look at that. Now that looks like it's been cut with a razor and I'm blunt action on all of this. And now look how that's gonna, you can see how that's gonna melt inside there. Notice how I keep the section in my hand for control. I'm not taking out, I'm dry cutting. That's a visual exercise for me so I can see the cutting edge immediately rather than cutting it wet, then coming back blow drying, then picking up and recutting the hair. So when I do these crowns and things like this, I love to cut them dry. The reason being is I can visually see my edge right away. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna take this last one off, just cause I want to. <laughs> I'm gonna take that off. Now look how I've worked that. Short to long, so I'm maintaining a nice set of length on top of that. Now when she does this, you're gonna start to have some movement in this. That's what's so beautiful about this. Let's go to the opposite side. Okay, once again, giving you a profile view of this, and then watch my sectioning. Look how I use, just skim my finger across these clips, and then you can find your section really easy. And then we've said we're diagonal forward, so watch the comb, that's the section I'm gonna take right there. So I'm gonna go diagonal forward. Now watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come back to this opposite side, I'm gonna take a slice of what I cut over here. So I'm taking this slice, and I'm going to use that as my guide. So I'm looking for that slice, here it is here, there it is. You can see it on top. Okay, let's take a look at it. There it is, back to the center. Let's give you a front view of this so you can see where my hand's at. Okay, now watch how my hand is right over that center part. So I am right over that. Okay, looking for my guide, there it is. And scan, notch, point cut, right to that. Okay, now if you feel that line has too much bluntness, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fan and I'm gonna go deep into it. Stabilize the shear parallel with the hair. Now move the fan to the shear. Where you see the weight, take it out. So why did you do that, Sam, and not on some of the other sections that you've already cut? I just visually saw there was a lot of weight there. Once again, that's what's great about cutting it dry. Here we go. Right up to that middle part. Here I come to that middle part. And now look at how I'm cutting over my hand, but look how my fingers are overlapped. I tend to have air pockets, so if you take a look, you can see my air pockets there. Overlapping gives me nice tension, and I close that air pocket down. Now, let's talk about product. Product is not an option, it is a necessity. I gotta make sure I'm going a little bit longer each section, and not keeping them even, okay? But product is, is not an option, it is a necessity. And we have to understand that, my friends. I don't want you throwing in the towel on product because of Amazon or Ulta. Listen, there's plenty for everybody. What you have to understand is that it's part of our professional responsibility to prescribe and recommend professional products that you believe in. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start thinking about the economy of the world today. What we're doing now, it's all about an experience economy, meaning that it's being driven by the millennials. The millennials are setting it up, meaning that I'm not gonna buy a house, Sam. I'm gonna go to Ibiza and have a vacation for a month. So they're all about the experience. 
my wife said to me, let's go see a movie. And I thought, oh, I haven't been to a movie theater in five years. She said, let's go see Bohemian Rhapsody. And I thought, Bohemian Rhapsody, that's a great idea. So now there's a company over there that's taken over the movie industry and they don't own brick and mortar. They're called Netflix. But here's what's so cool. What's so cool is when we went to that theater, I walked in, I go, I elbowed my wife. I said, honey, I can buy a beer. I bought the beer. She put a red little thing on me. I said, what's that for? She goes, you're 21 and you can only have two. And I thought, well, I respect that. It's a movie theater. I went to go sit down on what I thought would be 200 chairs cramped up. No, my friends, 90 reclining chairs. And I thought, this is awesome. As we're going through it, I am looking at the theater. Here comes that girl. She's looking for my band because it glows. It glows in the dark. And I thought, she came up, she said, would you like a second beer? And would you like some nachos? And I thought, this is cool. Here's my point. When we left that theater, both my wife and I looked at each other and we said, what an experience. We're going to come back. So now here's my point, what I'm trying to tell you. The movie theater industry didn't panic because of Netflix. They gathered and they figured out how do we get our customers back in the theater? We create an experience. So here's what I'm gonna suggest to you. When you go to do this, how do we create an experience in the salon, Sam? I would recommend the way that we create an experience in the salon is you go through and, can you imagine this, Maggie? When it comes time to teach the client how to blow dry their hair, take their phone, put it on a monkey tripod, press video, and videotape you teaching them how to blow dry their hair. Hand them the brush, hand them the blow dryer, correct what they're doing wrong. Now when you're done, can you imagine you're handing that phone back to that client and you're saying, here you go, Maggie. You are now a YouTube star. Every morning you put me on your vanity, it's gonna be a, your own YouTube tutorial starring you and me. So I'll see you every morning. Guys, that's an experience. When a client walks on out the salon, they're going, no hairdresser has ever shown genuine concern for me to go in and do something like that by videotaping the blow dryer. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's an experience. So do me a favor, my friends. Remember, the attitude is there's plenty for everybody. It's just up to you to go out and get it. And that's the key thing. Now, take a look. I have this hair one length. It looks one length, look at it, okay? But watch this. When I turn her and I do this, where she turns, look at, look at, look at the volume I'm getting out of that. And look at the layering I got out of that in terms of that. And that's what I love about this. And then she could pull this back. Here's my layering right there. But now what I want you to look is look how diffused it is where you don't see it. You don't see that at all. Now that's what I'm talking about in terms of creating something that's really solving the problem. Problem? Start thinking solutions. I want to thank you so much on behalf of Modern Salon, behalf of Sam Via, and behalf of Reckon for watching. And also, don't forget, follow Sam Via, Sam Via Hair on Instagram. Follow Modern Salon. Subscribe to Modern Salon. I can't tell you, people say, Sam, how'd you build your career? I subscribe to every magazine. Why? Because that was my visual inspiration. Now you have social, yet guess what? In the magazines, it's an opportunity for you in the magazine to spend some quiet time alone instead of doing the swiping. Turn the page, my friends. Who loves you? Sam Villa and Modern Salon. Thanks for watching.